What's up guys, how's it going? So I got my next part of my vinyl collection series for you. Episode number 10, I believe. So yeah, let's get into it. Got a good variety like usual. I like to keep things kind of very not sure one style when I do this. So let's get into it. But first, if you can hear it, listening to a favorite from this year, which will be on my ear year and list which I plan on doing a top 25 so look out for that sometime in December. The Kriegs Grove Fires in the Fall. These guys have had a very interesting trajectory. They started out as more of a straightforward black metal band then got into like post black and now they're like blackened death doom atmospheric type stuff kind of so yeah. If you like what you hear check it out. I don't know if I mentioned this, but every time I do a video, whatever I'm listening to, I always leave in the description. So if you're curious, check it out here. Listen for a second. Yeah. I have no idea who put this out, though, but I bought on the band camp, so you should be able to find it still. So, yeah. Alright, so next up, first up, this band... It's announced a new album that's coming out. What's well, all the album? They have pre orders up for which I bought my copy, so I figured it'd be appropriate to start with them. Two more, so I got the last two, not including the new one. I still need the debut Primordial Malignancy, I think is what it's called, but I'll get that eventually. But yeah. First up, definitely, I would say this is probably still the fan favorite Man of Infinite Forms of 2018. Definitely, they start out as more of a Fin Death style band, which I've seen interviews of the guys from the band, and they basically admitted, yeah, that was the goal. They wanted to make a Finnish style of death metal, but on here, they still have some of that. You could tell they're going in a slightly different direction, but not yet, but yeah. Cool painting, though. This definitely has probably, the, I would say the most popular song is Abyss Walker, that, like, middle riff is probably the most recognizable. The duh. Yeah, awesome. There's the front, back. Tough through twenty bucks to film like all this stuff was. Actually, no. I think the debut was probably through Blood Harvest, so I lied. Here's the insert. Not my favorite two mold record, but I definitely see why a lot of people still say this is their favorite. But yeah, two mold. Planetary uh, Man of Infinite Forms 2018. And then my personal favorite, which I know some people didn't like, the slightly more proggy direction. I like the way they went. They definitely, I think this is where they found their own sound. Favorite on here is probably the title track or Infinite Resurrection. This whole album is awesome. Probably my favorite cover art though, that they've had so far. I have a t shirt of this one, so anyway. There's the front. Back again, put out through 20 bucks spin. Here's the like little poster. Oops, upside down. I know there was a special edition of this record that had multiple posters. I wasn't cool enough to get that on time, but oh well. And then the insert for this one all the lyrics. These guys are from Canada, if I didn't mention that, but I'm sure everyone watching this video knows where two more are located, so I didn't need to mention that. So let me show you the record. They had a bunch of versions available when I bought this, but this is the one I figured matched the album artwork the best, so that is the one I decided to go for for this video. So yeah, let me show you the labels better. Very rad. The new album I do have pre-order, which I will give you my opinion on that when it shows up. I have heard the record, I like it a lot, but I will say more about it when it actually shows up. So, yep. Again, two more Man of Infinite Forms and Planetary Clairvoyance. Alright, so let's go to New Jersey. For a thrash band that has like 20 two albums I think but I only have four of them which I think you know who I'm talking about overkill so I have four of the first five so let's do one at a time feel the fire the debut record from 1985 originally on megaforce I think megaforce and metal blade I always get those two labels confused but 
definitely, I see people say this is like kind of like US style power metal. Maybe like only in the early phase one, I can kind of see that. Not really pure thrash yet, but it has some faster moments like Rock Through the Core, Hammerhead, Blood Iron, Through the Fire. But yeah, not my favorite overkill, but it's definitely up there. So anyway, there's the front of this one. Awesome picture. In the back, the guy's live shot, I'm assuming, during this era. So 2008 Mega Force reissue, like I said originally, 2005. Doesn't come with any lyrics, it's literally just a record, but on any nice. Overkill Green, which I know that's their color. Yep. Feel the Fire. My personal favorite, maybe Take It Over. When I first saw this picture, I thought they were a glam band because of their hair, which I'm not really sure why looking back because of their bullet belts and stuff, but they look kind of glammy, not, not gonna lie, but favorites on this one, probably Wrecking Crew or Overkill 2 or Deny the Cross, but yeah, anyway, fun of this one, this is a, it says Music on Vinyl, but it doesn't say, no, never mind, Music on Vinyl 2014 reissue, okay. Again, 87 Mega Force originally. Back of this one. Insert. And this record just on black, so I'm not going to show that. Yeah. If you only have to get one Overkill record, this is definitely the one I suggest. Yeah. Taken over. Just listen to the song Wrecking Crew and you'll be sold. And then I think the most underrated record, in my opinion, my second favorite behind, from probably my second favorite behind Taken Over, that's just Under the Influence from 88, I think. They went to Atlanta because it was a 2021 BMG reissue, so yeah. Also, I think this was probably one of the first records I ever heard by them too, so yeah. Definitely has a soft, I have a soft spot for this one. Favorite song on here, probably Shred, Mad Gone World, and Drunken Wisdom, but yeah. Anyway, there's the front, back, guys in the band, tracks, see that better. This is the insert with the lyrics and the back guy, guys in the band. Nice yellow, slight like black marbling kind of. Under the Influence, awesome record, kind of underrated. I don't have Years of Decay, because honestly, of their first five records, that's the only one I haven't been able to connect with. I'm not really sure why. It's not bad, just kind of... I don't know, if I see it for cheap, I'll pick it up, but not in any hurry to grab it. And then the last of the records I have for now is Horoscope. Definitely, I would say this is, like, closer to Years of Decay than their first three records, but I think this is, like, Years of Decay done better, but... Favorites on here, Coma, Blood, Money, and Thanks for Nothing. Although if I have one criticism of this record, all the good songs are kind of on the A side. Not all the good songs, but it's definitely like from those as far as like the highlights, I guess you could say. Come out in, I think, 91. Yeah, 91 Atlantic, so 2021 BMG issue again. But anyway, it took me a while to appreciate this record, but now I listen to it a good amount. I really enjoy this one. Anyway, there's the front. The back. I know the fan favorite track on here is definitely the song Horoscope, and I know several people have said this is their best record in general, which I can definitely see your argument for saying that. But anyway, lyric sheet. Guys in the band. Nice blue. Doesn't really match very good, but I like this color though. G-Man Horoscope. Overkill, considering how many albums they have, I'm sure I'll get some more eventually, but... I don't know, I think four is good for now. Alrighty, so next up, let's go to some black metal. Oh boy. So I have... One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven... Albums by Leviathan. I have one on tape. I'll show that when I do my tape collection. 
So this is the Veru compilation, I think it's what it's called. So this is basically, I think, everything that Jeff did before the debut record. It's like some crazy box set, which I will show you, but there's a front of this. In the back, this whole thing open because I don't want the albums to spill out, so I have to kind of figure out a weird way to hold this. There you go. There's that. show you the back is gonna be kind of awkward but there you go the giant painting I'm assuming it's done by him this is a quadruple LP so it's definitely a super long compilation just sh what colors are these on I'm just black but I like the labels though really simple Shit, man, not my favorite material from Leviathan, but it's definitely up there, but I don't remember when, yeah, it says all tracks formed in, for, yeah. okay, so yeah. Awesome material, is this necessary? No, but if you like the early, like, demo and split stuff and you don't want to have to search all that stuff out individually, definitely a an awesome compilation that I recommend. I know, I think it was originally on a double CD, so if you want the LP. I don't remember why I bought this, but, oh well. Yep, that's Vera 2. The first full length, the 10th, ten, the ten, like, ten sub level of Suicide. Probably my favorite still, though I like all of his albums, except the Dark Ambient one. I'm kind of not really a huge fan of that album, but the rest are awesome. Highlights on this, probably fucking you've got some change of ice is definitely one of his best songs, or. The, the Womb. No, who. Yeah, The Womb Shadows. Fuck. The Womb Shadows More Towards. Yeah, that song. Yeah, I just woke up like a half hour ago. If I'm dumber than usual, I'm sorry. But anyway. 2002, I think this came out originally. 2002, 2000, something like that. 2018, more burning reissues. Anyway. There's the front. Back. Tracks. The picture of Jeff. Nice gatefold with a what is that? Is that a quote? Yeah, it's a quote. Cool pictures, I'm assuming, drawn by him. Has a couple of inserts with just the lyrics, so there's insert one. Insert two. Obviously, it means it's a double LP, but both are exactly the same, but I'll just show you one. I really like the color of this. It's awesome. I like his logo. Probably one of the best black metal logos, at least in my opinion, because the second you see it, it's like super recognizable, very unique looking. So, yep. The 10th sub-level, definitely my favorite full length, arguably. This was probably the most popular one. I don't know where I, where I would put this if I had to rank this stuff, but because a lot of his stuff kind of sounds not identical, but you know what you're getting when you get a Leviathan record in, until the last one, but we'll discuss that a different day. So this is Tentacles of Horror, I think 2004 maybe is when this came out originally. Yeah, I definitely see why this is the fan favorite. I would say it's even more like caustic and insane than the debut but anyway there's the front not very good cover up but oh well i like the red logo though back again another picture of jeff i'm assuming track this thing another more burn reissue which i bought these both at the same time when they got reissued in 2018 i can't tell which way this goes but there's both again kind of same style insert Jeff telling you to fuck off. More lyrics on this one. Again, like the debut, a double LP. And then this one is on a cool, like, white and pink splatter thing, which I will show you in a second. Very nice. 
All of these sound fantastic, so good job, Morbun, for putting these out and doing them properly. Unlike another person who tried to reissue his stuff and did a bad job, <coughs> Blake Judd. <coughs> so, yep, Curly Record, definitely see why this is the, his most popular one. Another favorite, Massive Conspiracy Against All Life. I know several people that seem to really say this is his favorite. Their favorite, probably my... Like, I don't know where to put this one, but anyway. Another 2018 more binary issue, so anyway. There's the front. Then the back. The vice, the Massive Conspiracy Against All Life. Does this one with any inserts? No, this one has no inserts. Actually, no, I lied. This has a book instead. Which I know there were some like versions of this that got reissued like in 20 like 15 didn't have any lyrics. People were kind of pissed off about that, and then the next version did have lyrics, which is this version. I'm not sure if it's got a new reissue since because I haven't been paying attention because I already have it, but oh well. Again, another double LP. See, it's side massive conspiracy, and then the other two say all life, so that way you know which is which side to play. So yeah, awesome album. And then his most underrated one, I know several, several people that don't like this album. This is probably my second or third favorite. For a while, it took Leviathan a while to click with me, and honestly, this was the only record of his I liked for a while, which is definitely kind of an odd choice, but I don't know, I think. Killer Record, screw the haters. Favorite songs in this one, probably brought, brought up to this bottom, or shed the skin, but anyway. This is True Treated True Horror from 2012, I think. Anyway, there's the front. Very simple. Then the back. Definitely the most bare bones of all the albums I have by him. And it's the only one with a single vinyl, too. This is the only one that happened to got a new issue recently, but someone I'm following on Instagram was selling this record for a good price, so I jumped on it when I had the chance. So, yeah. True Treated True Horror. I'm not sure why this one gets kind of shit on, but oh well. Good record, screw the haters. And then a couple compilations. This is the Unfailing Fall into Knock, which I know there was some drama because douchebag Blake Judd repressed this and did a terrible job, but this is actually by someone who's not a asshole did a good job repressing these, so yeah. Anyway, fun this one. I believe this is like more split stuff. And I think this one is demo versions of the first four lines, so correct me if I'm mistaken, but anyway. Front of that one, probably the best artwork though, I love that painting. Then the back. Gatefold. Very nice, another cool painting, looks like something from the Alien movie, which I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be. Just black violin, yeah, black wax on this one, so. Unfailing fall into not. Awesome compilation, and then the first ten, and then the first sub level of suicide. Like I said, I believe it's demo tracks of the first. Um, like I'd be speaking out of my ass. So, oh wow, that's the front. Akab has like cool stuff inside the cross. It's not just a boring cross design. And even the moon has some stuff too. Yep. Then the back, again more stuff on the side and his awesome logo. I don't remember who put these out, but I bought it from the, from the label directly, so... I'll have to check my Discogs again to see who put this out, but yeah. Awesome compilation. His, he hasn't done anything like full length watch since 2015. I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe he's just too busy tattooing people instead of working on music, but... A new album would be cool, but whatever. If he's done, then at least we got a good discography in. Scar said it was definitely a highlight of his career. He went out in a good way if that truly was his last record. Alright, so let's talk about some more death metal, surprisingly. Not really at all. So, Gruesome. Definitely not an original band, but they are awesome for what they do. So, I have these three. So, first up, Savage Land, a debut record from 2014, I think, or 2015. So obviously, if you know this band, they are basically a death tribute band, but they write original material. So each record is with, inspired by a different era of death. So I believe this is the one that was inspired by Leprosy. But yeah, not my favorite. Not my favorite of the gruesome stuff. That would be Twisted Prayers, oddly enough. Even though I like Leprosy more than Spiritual Healing, so you would think it would be the opposite. But I don't know. So anyway, front 
of this one, even done by Ed Repka, who did Leprosy, you can kind of tell because he has a very kind of formulaic style. It's always one figure in the back, in the front, and a couple guys in the back with a background. So, yeah, the second you see Ed Repka, you know it's him. But anyway, there's the front. Definitely the best artwork, though. I love that. I want a t shirt of that design. I like the logo, too. Backpack and the band, so kind of super group. Matt from Exum, Daniel from Possessed. And I don't remember what band these people are in. I think he used to be in Shed the Skin, but I may be wrong about that. I probably am, but I don't remember, so don't quote me. Weird sheet for this one. Very nice. Close this one. Just a black, I think. Yep, just black. Put out three relapse, if I didn't say 2015. So, yep. Awesome. Not my favorite full length, but still good. And then Dimensions of Horror, this is just an EP from 2016, I believe. I think this was their attempt to do human style, maybe. I don't remember exactly, but again, another red Epco, which I think added all three of these ones design, which I'm pretty, yeah, definitely is. So anyway, there's the front. Back again, same guys. Again, through relapse. Lyrics on this one. Even though like, Human is my favorite death record, this is my least favorite of the three of these. Maybe it's because it's an EP and it's shorter, so yeah. Awesome Dimensions of Horror 2016. And then I think my favorite gruesome record today, which they haven't done anything since, so it's been five years already, so. I'm, I'm assuming Matt's busy with Exhume and Daniel's busy with Possess, so they don't have time to do it. This considering this is just a side project thing, but anyway. Twisted Prayers. Obviously, this is them doing spiritual healing, which you can tell I actually have that pulled out, so. Pretty similar, because this is both about like church and religion, which is basically what they went for with this cover, so yeah. There's the front again, very obviously Ed Repka. Then the back, same lineup again. That's the relapse. This one's actually colored though. This is just black, so. Lyrics again. This one comes on a nice yellow, kind of like party graffiti color. I like the camo labels though. If you've seen the old, like, Combat center label that the, some of the early death stuff was on. They probably tried to replicate that. So, yeah. Not an original band, obviously, but for what they do, they're still fun. So, yep. Yeah. Gruesome. A new record would be cool, but I'm sure it's not exactly a high priority for them. Alrighty, next up, let's go back to Black Metal. So, I got a lot of. Uh, records by Mardik, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I got 8, which I have almost all this stuff on CD, but we'll talk about that when I get to the CD collection eventually. Fuck Me Jesus, Jesus, this is a demo from, I think, 1990? I think 1990, yeah. Definitely this and their first full length, they were definitely more of a death metal band, but... Kind of like Doug's when they started off Death Metal went to Black Metal, but I would say even on this, they were they still had Black Metal influences. Like, you could tell they were influenced by, like, Bathory and stuff, which is the first Doug Phil record. It's good, but it's just kind of, like, second-rate sweet death, where this and their first full-length, even right away, you could tell they got their own sound going on. But, yeah. Anyway, this is the front of this very infamous, infamous one. I believe the OG was just on a 7-inch, if I'm not mistaken, again. Put that through Osmos, which I think most of these, at least the older ones, are definitely Osmos, so yeah. Favorite song was probably the title track or Shut Up and Suffer. This comes with a insert with the lyrics that are upside down, but of course they are. There's that. Picture of the guys in the band. Definitely, I would say, one of the best logos in the black one. I love the Marduk logo. And then here's the LP. You see a single sided with the B side having this cool like wolf pentagram type thing. Awesome. 
it kind of annoys me when labels have an album that's not single side and they when that is single side and they can't be bothered to even put something cool on the B side. And luckily, they did for this one. So, good job, Osmos. Yeah. Fuck me, Jesus. Definitely a awesome stuff for these guys. Doug Endless. Honestly, still my favorite full length by Magic, which might be a, not a popular opinion, but I don't know, man. This has like a perfect mixture of death metal and slight black metal influences, but like I said, but like I said, Dark Throne get, went for kind of more sweetest sound, which this to me sounds kind of like a more blackened version of early autopsy, maybe. So like mental funeral sort of, but with its own unique sound. Favorite song in here is Still Fucking Dead. That's definitely one of the best songs. Or Within the Abyss or the title track, which this is a double LP, which didn't need to be. It seems kind of overkill, but oh well. I think it's only a half hour long, so I'm not sure why they decided to make a double LP, but whatever. So there's the front of this one. Then the back tracks, dudes in the band. I know Morgan, the guitarist. The guitarist is the only original member left. Came with a century immediate order sheet, which I'm sure. Most of the stuff is definitely probably out of stock. I've had this since like 2017, so. A little insert. And then I believe this one is etched on the D side, which I will show you. Yep. The same wolf that was on the other one. Simple labels. So at least, even though it's kind of annoying to have a double LP for the fact that at least they gave us an insert. And then this comes with a square poster. Definitely not very good artwork. It's kind of an odd choice for a album of design, but it's fitting though. So there's that. Jeff Duck, and it's definitely an interesting debut and kind of shows where they were going. Those of the Unlike, definitely a fan favorite, which I have this one CD. It's kind of glary, so I'm sorry about that. I wish they didn't do that, which it was like more like, what they called. Never mind, but anyway. Favorites on this one, probably Darkness Breeds un Immortally and Echoes from the Past of the fan favorites, definitely Wolves and Burn My Coffin, which those are great songs too, but anyway, there's the front, then the back, super glossy, like I said, Osmos Projection is reissue, 2017, Gatefold, again, glossy as shit, so you can't really see anything, definitely, I see why this is one of Marty's more popular records, but it's not my favorite though, definitely in my top five though, so yep, what's this one called again? Those are the Unlights, so 1992, I think. Awesome record, definitely their first full black on the record. Opus Nocturne, another fa fan favorite, but not my favorite of the black on the air that's coming up next. 1994, they got in, they went slightly faster on this one because the first, well, those of the Unlights still have some more slower moments. This has some slow moments too. They didn't go full on total created to Panther Division, but you all know that anyway, so. There's the front of this one, the back, again, super glossy, Osmos Projection is reissued, but... Oh, well, it's, it sounds great, though, so I can't complain too much. Gatefold, lyrics, guys in the band. Yep. Is it black? Yeah, just black. Those are the uh, Opus Nocturne 1994, like I said, so definitely another fantastic record. My favorite of the Black Metal era in my second favorite Mudrick record, Heaven Shall Burn When We Are Gathered, which I have a CD that had the alternate cover, which I will show you. My CD copy has... Wow, you can't see that. Hang on a second. That would have been a terrible album choice for the LP. I'm so glad I did not have to deal with that cover for the LP. No bueno. Yeah, I think this is definitely where they perfected their black metal sound, at least to me they did, because they didn't, they, it was still dynamic, because I like Panzer Division, but it's honestly my least favorite of the 90s stuff, because every song kind of sounds the same, which is not a bad thing, but I don't know. 
they still had like standout songs on this record, but yep. This is front again, glossy as shit, so thanks Osmos. And the back. Gatefold. Again, super glossy, but very nice. This one definitely one of my favorite looking LPs in my collection. Cool like purple and black marble. I know the light's kind of terrible, so that doesn't really help either, but oh that's what you get. Yep, have Shell Burn we had gathered I think ninety five or ninety six when they came out. Then we got Nightwing from 98, underrated record in my opinion. Definitely one of their best, again, one of my top five. I probably said that for all of them, but yep. Anyway, there's a fun, this one. Isn't my CD copy different artwork from this one? No, never mind, same one. I gotta double check, but yep. There's the front. Then the back, tracks. Again, super glossy, so that's annoying. Gatefold. All of the lyrics again, guys in the band. Awesome, killer record, underrated as hell. And then a lot of the 2000s stuff I'm kind of hit and miss on, but this record is awesome. Definitely my favorite of the 2000s era. Plague Angel from 2004, I think. Yeah, 2004, Century Media. This is a 2018 Century Media reissue and not. Hooray, well, it's not super glossy, it's more of a matte, but oh well. There's the front, kind of odd cover art, but oh well. Then the back. Favorite on this one, I think it's, what is it? Seven Angels, Seven Trumpets is definitely one of my favorite motive songs in general. Or Parish and Flames, definitely the other highlights, so anyway. Front again. The back. Gatefold. With the lyrics, I think. This comes with a giant post, which I'm not going to bother showing you, but I will show you the insert. Which is kind of use useless, it just has some odd pictures, so I'm not sure what the point of this was, but... Oh well. So yep, if you, if you think motives kind of stop being good after Panda Division, definitely give this one a listen. One of the best and easily in my favor, the modern era. And then the last record I have on violence is Wosha. So this is a live album, I think. Yeah, live album. Does it say what day? It's recorded in Poland. I don't remember when this show was, though. It doesn't say on the back. But anyway, this is a live show. Not, ne not necessary to own, but it was in front of me when I bought it at the record store, so I wanted to buy it, because why not? So anyway, there's the front. The back, bunch of wool stuff. Gate full double LP. There's black. Yeah, black comes with a giant poster, poster which is a pain. They have to put it away. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. So yeah, Malik Wusha. Awesome band. The last couple. Well, Victoria, I thought kind of sucked, but the new one is definitely a step in a better direction. So. I'll pick it up eventually, but we'll see. I have enough, so it's not really a high priority, but I'll get it if I see it in person. Alright, so here's a total classic of early grindcore. <laughs> Repulsion and Horrified. Recorded in 86, I believe, as a demo and came out in 1989. Man, this will come out in 86. I would have been insane, definitely. Would have been by far the most extreme thing to come out in 86, but anyway. You all know this record if you're into Proto Grind or Death Metal at all. This is a total classic, so anyway. There's the front of this one. Then the back. Put that through re Relapse Reissue, I think. 2010. Here's the Lyric Insert. And this is on a nice pink. So, I mean, if you know Grind at all, this is definitely a classic that you all should be familiar with. So, Repulsion Horrified. 
Uh, so this band is a weird one for me. I don't listen to them, them that often. I go a while without listening to one of the records. Whenever I listen to it, I'm like, oh, I should spin this more often and buy more, but I never do. I don't know why I'm like that, but oh well. So I'm talking about Ghoul. I got two of their albums. I got Splatter's Thrash and Dungeon Bastards. This is 2007, I think, is when this came out. On Tank Crime, so a side project of guys from... Exhumed and paled and wolves in the throne room, I think. And they kind of like Death Thrash, which their first two records had some like grind stuff in it too, but they definitely ditched most of the grinds, became super aggressive Death Thrash anyway. From this one, I love the kind of cartoon style, but through Tank Crash, if I didn't mention that. So, anyway, there's that. In the back, I don't remember who that guy is, but oh well. Gate full of more pictures of the all the members. I know Ross Stewart is in this band, so he's probably the most well known one from Exhume. Cool gray and pink kind of marble merge thing. And then here's the lyric sheet. So if you're curious about Ghoul, this is definitely, I'd say, the Record to check out easily the best in my opinion, but I like all this stuff honestly, but Yep, Splatter Thrash And then Dungeon Bastards, they haven't done anything since this, this was 2016 So they're definitely due for a new one, but like I said, they were side projects, so Oh well, anyway Front of this one, again, Pathway Tank Crimes in the back The guy's playing some, some board game Track listing It's like a board game you can play with, I've never played this, but it's pretty cool that you actually did that. Very nice, plain red. See, I don't know why I only own these two, I'll get some more eventually, but it's like, not exactly a high priority, because I don't spend these that often. It's one of those things, if I ever saw it at a record store, I would buy it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to buy one online, if you know what I mean, so yep. That's cool, Splutter, Three Ash, and Dungeon Bastards. Awesome. Alright, you have three more albums that were done. These are both by the same band. Sarcophago. I had the demo compilation, but I sold it because I didn't like it. Because honestly, it was a double LP, and every side was just the same four songs repeated. So it was kind of pointless, but... Oh, well. I and I, definitely, I would say, the most important record that they've done. I would pick a favorite though, these were both, I probably like them about equal, but I tend to spin this one more often than I do this, because they are both different, because if you know Sarcophago, they kind of change style with every release. This is like first wave black metal, obviously. The rotting EP is thrash. This is like kind of weird death metal. Then they went like groove and then industrial metal, kind of, so they're definitely all over the place, but anyway. 1987, I think this is it was either the original singer or original guitarist of Sepultura from this band. I don't remember which, but it was definitely one of those two guys. But anyway, you all know that anyway. Front. Back. This record's notorious for having kind of terrible butchered English, which is kind of hilarious. Favorite on this one is probably Ready to Fuck You, Death Thrash. If you are false, do not enter. You will be burned and died. Which is hilarious. There's the insert with the, like I said, the kind of not very good English, but they're from Brazil, so it's not their first language, so it ain't exactly their fault, but at least they tried to write in English. Awesome poster that I had hung up for a while, but I took it down recently when I hung up these things behind me. Yep, INRI, definitely a super important record for the mid 80s black metal scene. Lots of scourge, underrated records, one doesn't seem to get mentioned. People only seem to ever talk about INRI, which I kind of get it. It's a great record, but this one's awesome too. This probably has my favorite song by them of all time, which is the last song, Crush, Kill, Destroy. Crush, Kill, Destroy. The best song. This is a great Hades 2014 reissue, and it on the lessons from Cogamello originally, obviously, so. There's the front of this one. And the back. 
Gates fold. Guys in the van, they kind of look like early 80s, early 90s Mobile Angels, sort of, with like the Brazilian looking ones, I guess. So, yep. Laza Scourge 1991. Awesome. I'll get the Rotting EP eventually, but I haven't been able to find it for, good, for a good price yet. And after that, no bueno. They kind of changed. Not good. Alright, this end with kind of a weird one and not a metal album. This is King Crimson, the core of the Crimson King from 1960-whatever. Definitely a super important album for Prague. I'm not a huge fan of this style, but I'm picky with my Prague stuff, but what I like, I really enjoy, so yeah. They have a bunch of albums, honestly, most of them I've never heard, but this is definitely my favorite what I have heard, so. You see that? Gate full of lyrics, more weird looking pictures, which is prog, prog all about super weird shit for some reason, but oh well. I'm not sure how available the stuff is, but like I said, I haven't really checked, so yeah. Most of these albums, I've only heard like two of them. I think I've heard Locks, Tongues, and Aspects, and Red. The rest of them I've never heard, so I can't comment on any of that, but yeah. Good record, not something I spin very often, but if I'm in the mood for kind of weird shit, I guess you good better to spin, so yep. King Crimson called the Crimson King. That's it, I'm not sure what I'll do for my next video. It seems like I say that every time, but I have a couple ideas spinning in my noggin, but I might do a community post to see which one you guys want me to do first, so I'll keep an eye on that in like a week or two. So thanks for watching. Take care, like I said, if you like what you hear in the background, link in the description, so check that out. Peace out, guys. Take care. Goodbye.